Hello, I'm Dr. Marla Shapiro. I'm a past president of the North American Menopause Society. And today we really have some very exciting information to share with you today. And no one better than Dr. Dawn Muslim, who's gonna be talking to us about nutrition and the prevention of breast cancer. She's a board certified lifestyle medicine specialist um, and a medicine breast specialist per se at the Roberta and Monica Jacoby Center for Breast Health. She's a consultant at Mayo Clinic. She's a medical director for Mayo Clinic Florida Humanities and Medicine in Jacksonville, Florida. And today we are gonna be talking about information to really empower women. That is so important. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for letting me be here, Dr. Shapiro. This is really an honor. So let's first start for our women who are out there with an empowering statistic, because it, I think it blows most people's mind when they hear the percentage of breast cancer that you can prevent through lifestyle, just what you eat, what you do. Tell us. You said it. So we can prevent 33% of all breast cancer cases if we lived a healthier lifestyle. And it's projected possibly that if we do this at an earlier age, that possibly that number is as high as 50 to 70%. So we're gonna see more and more studies. I mean, we see this over the past decade, right? More and more prevention studies are coming out. Prevention is so important. This is about preventing this bad disease from occurring in the first place. How exciting is that? So I'm so happy we're here. So it's, it, it really is. I mean, we talk about breast cancer having a higher risk in women who are obese. So before we talk about how to lose weight and to attack that, why is that fact true? isn't that complicated it's so hard because it's such a struggle for so many folks to maintain an ideal body weight but there's a lot of factors that go into it number one the body fat itself carries a lot of inflammation and we know inflammation can be a trigger for cancer number two you make estrogen in your body fat and we know that the majority of breast cancer 75 percent are driven by estrogen and number three when you have more body fat your body's not as effective at taking up insulin. So whenever we eat sugar, whenever we eat you know, processed foods, refined carbohydrates, that insulin goes way up and it floats around in your body. And that's linked to some growth factors. That is not a good thing when it comes to cancer formation. And then lastly, there's some new studies along hormone things like leptin, very sophisticated studies being done. So very complex ways as to why body fat drives cancer from forming not just breast cancer, but many other cancers. In fact, it's estimated that 12 cancers total could be prevented if people were able to attain a normal body weight. Okay, so let's talk about the kind of diet that you endorse. I know that there's a plant sitting behind you and that's probably not there for by accident. <laughs> Tell us about your plant-based diet and why this is something you're so passionate about. I am really passionate about plant-based nutrition. I see my patients thrive on it. So number one, when you're on a plant predominant diet, you're getting a lot of fiber in your diet. And you know, in our country, the majority of people are so worried about protein. Everyone gets enough protein. We don't have to be worried about protein, but there is a dramatic fiber deficiency in our country. Over 97% of Americans are fiber deficient. You know, that's, so for that's women, striking. It's striking. And so women, your goal, according to the American Institute for Cancer Research, is to get 30 grams of fiber a day. And you know what? You don't need to stop there. You can go further. And the cool thing with fiber is when you eat it, it fills you up. So you don't have the desire to eat other foods. The other cool thing is when you eat fiber, you kind of kick out some of those calories. So you kind of right. get, you, gotta, you know, don't get all the calories that you're actually eating. The next thing is it's also really good at helping to optimize and even to lower estrogen levels as well as cholesterol. So how great is that? Here we're talking about breast cancer, the majority of which are estrogen rich, and if fiber can help us manage that in a better way, there's just so many benefits when it comes to fiber. So my recommendation is plant predominant diet where we're getting at least five servings of vegetables and fruits a day. We include whole grains. We include things like nuts and seeds and beans. So let's talk about those, those whole grains because so many people are carb phobic. They think that carbs are bad. What on a label are you looking for to know that this is a carbohydrate that's rich in fiber and that is, you know, something that you should be eating? That's a great question. I love that you asked that. So number one, let's try not to do foods with a bunch of ingredients. You know, don't buy the oatmeal muffin. Let's just buy oatmeal and make oatmeal for breakfast. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that I encourage patients to do anytime that you're going to buy a grain. Let's say that you're buying bread. Let's say that you're buying crackers, or let's say you're just buying that whole grain. Look at the fiber. 
You're doing a really good job if you have at least three grams of fiber per serving. You're doing an amazing job if you can get five grams of fiber. So I encourage all my patients when you go to the grocery store, look at that label. The first thing you look at is fiber. If there's three to five grams, it's a go. Keep looking on that label. Make sure there's no added sugar. Right. You don't want added sugar. And the next thing I encourage my patients to do is look at the fat, look at the saturated fat. We want to have fat and saturated fat low. And if they see that this product is a little heavier in fat, I encourage them to look at the label. And I really want the ingredient list not to have added oil. You know, if the manufacturer is adding oil, that's almost a sure tell sign that this is an ultra processed food. And so I have found that those three things, just looking at the fiber, looking at the added sugar, and looking at there's oil in the ingredient list right. has made it so easy for my patients to go to the, to the grocery store and get more natural foods. So get those whole grains. I love oatmeal for breakfast for my patients. That's the number one thing I encourage them to try to get in. Other okay. things, well, rich in protein too, so try some of those ancient grains as well. So let's talk about this is something that nobody wants to talk about, alcohol. Um, yeah. Because it's, it's become so much part of our culture that, you know, it seems to be almost the norm to, you know, drink with, the, you know, red wine, white wine, whatever. And the other thing also is, is that people not really understanding what a standard serving is. So, you know, the latest news, I'm from Canada, we just covered our new Canadian guidelines, the World Health Organization has really taken it down to two standard drinks, which is five ounces, not six or nine, five ounces once a week. So what is the story with alcohol and cancer? You're right. I mean, alcohol is a carcinogen. So it is in the same category as cigarettes. So when you go to see your doctor, your doctor is not saying, well, you can have a cigarette on special occasions. No, right. you can't smoke. So we really should try to avoid alcohol for breast cancer prevention, bottom line. The American Heart Federation has said that there's no heart benefit of alcohol. So that's another important thing because folks used to think, all right, well, I don't have a family history of breast cancer, but the majority of people actually don't have a family history of breast cancer. So keep that in mind. Only about you know five to ten percent of breast cancers are from family history. Maybe another five to ten percent are from genetics. So the majority of breast cancers just occur. So just because you have a family history doesn't mean you can be liberal with some of these things, right? As women and getting older, those are number one reasons for for developing breast cancer. But when it comes to alcohol, would you believe that twelve percent of all breast cancer cases have been attributable to alcohol worldwide? That accounts for 115,000 cases of breast cancer a year, and about 11% of breast cancer deaths are attributable to alcohol, that there's some link that the alcohol is pushing that over when it comes to breast cancer. Those are, those are numbers that are very hard to digest. Yeah. And alcohol has been so normalized in our society, right. you know? And so we really have to step back and say, why am I drinking this alcohol? It reduces our mood, it contributes to depression, it increases weight gain, and there's no known health benefits. We really want to try to limit our alcohol consumption. But for breast cancer prevention, the word there would be we want to try to avoid it. Okay, so let's talk about, you know, people who are really looking for a magic bullet, a supplement, a vitamin, um, something that they can insert into their diet. And is there any reality to the fact that a supplement or a vitamin can make a difference in your outcome? You know, there is no guaranteed breast cancer diet, breast cancer exercise regimen, so-called cancer fighting food, and there certainly is no magic bullet that is gonna prevent breast cancer. So the biggest thing that you should approach is how are you living your lifestyle as a whole? It's a pattern. You know, we want people to be physically active. You gotta move your body. You gotta eat that plant predominant diet that's rich in fiber, whole grain foods, lots of vegetables and fruits. We wanna really try to get five servings of vegetables and fruits a day. That's where the most bang for your buck occurs. So try to reach that every day. You wanna try to replace some of those animal proteins with more plant-based proteins, like beans and soy. Soy is safe. Soy actually shows a likely reduction in breast cancer occurrence, and it's safe for breast cancer survivors to have soy as well. So we really want this overall pattern of living healthy. We want to reduce toxic exposures, and you want to embrace social connections. You know, we know that embracing social connections is a very important element of life, and we certainly right. learned that during COVID. So no magic bullet. There's not one vitamin or pill that's going to prevent breast cancer from happening. You got to live the healthy lifestyle. And I think that that's such an important message for us to end on that really what you do and how you do it. So much of this is in your control rather than feeling you don't have an element of control. That's true. And you know, what's so exciting 
is that you can attain your vitality and flourish when you take care of your body. It feels good, it empowers you, and it gives you autonomy over any chronic disease you may have, and you feel better in the process. So that's what's most exciting about what I do, is to see my patients just feel in such harmony with life. So it's really beautiful. So I wish you all well. This is exciting to be able to share this news. Thank you for letting me be here. And thank you for being with us.